Hello everyone, I'm Marlene Wenger and this is the Elementum Art Podcast. On this show, we speak with artists and critics and deep dive into the ethics and aesthetics of the new power of art in the digital realm. In the third Elementum podcast, I had the pleasure to meet Anna Hoffmann, one of the very first artists that we featured on our platform. She tells us about how she came to know about NFT at the Rare Art Festival in New York in 2019 and how she has been more and more interested in, in this technology since that. Anna has a background in photography and she reveals how the different media of music, photography and video merge together in her works Black Ink on Paper and Stripes in the Hood. Welcome to the new era of art. Enjoy curated and limited edition art and start your personal collection today. Elementum, your new home for discovery art. Hello, everybody. I welcome you to this uh, third edition of the Elementum podcast. I'm here today with Anna Hoffmann. She's a contemporary artist based in Zurich. Uh, she studied uh, at the university first, sociology, right? And uh, then she did a BA in fine arts at Z, uh, ZHDK here in Zurich as well with the focus photography. And she is, and then she worked as a freelance artist in between and she's currently in her master studies of fine arts also at Zetadeka and um, also working at the F and F School of Art and Design. Right. Mm. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I work part time at the F and F School for Art and Design as an assistant and also I teach there some projects in photography and video. Nice. Yeah, very nice to have you. Thanks for being here. Maybe we just start um, right in because you were one of the first uh, artists that were actually featured on the Elementum uh, platform. So one of the first works. And uh, so it would be very interesting for us to know how you how you became involved with, with the people from Elementum and mm -hmm. how did it all get started? Maybe mm -hmm. we can start here. Yeah, I'm, I was invited for a conversation at that time and uh, the platform was uh, introduced to me. So at that time I had no idea of NFT and blockchain and cryptocurrency. That time was 2018 uh, or 19? I think two years ago around. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, so I had this conversation and um, I was very excited about it. And I think like two, in 2019, two years later, um, I went to New York as a part of a studio grant from the city of Zurich mm -hmm. and um, there I was invited to the Rare Art Festival. It's an art crypto festival to, to show my work there, uh, which I represented on uh, Elementum Art. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was really something completely new for me, this festival. It was kind of an aha experience. <laughs> um, the spark jumped over there. So it, it was a very heterogeneous, heterogeneous uh, colorful mix of people from very different backgrounds. Um, there were the IT people, uh, the engineers, the business people, um, but also the gamers. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so very heterogene. So and um, then two men who also spoke in front of the people um, um, went to me and this and explained me the whole like crypto art world and and, and blockchain and everything so for me it was very sci-fi at this moment <laughs> um, um and but also very exciting and um, somehow very elusive and abstract and and yet a very like a whole new world so i was very fascinated and um uh especially since I generally find the increasing merging of technology and art exciting and, and I'm a very curious person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and from then on, I was actually interested in the topic. Um, then I also buy, bought uh, Bitcoins by myself a mm -hmm. little bit. And <laughs> Do you still have them now? The interesting question. Yes, I still <laughs> have them. Uh, yeah, I bought at a good moment, but not so very many. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so and for several months now I've been working uh, I've been offering works of art via NFT on Elementum mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm really not an expert in the field um, when it comes to technology and the topic so I also scratch at the uh, surface myself and slowly try to approach it mm -hmm. 
but it's also something that you have to deal with in order to like uh, really understand it I think yes. so and at the same time I find it very interesting um, that you cannot really grasp it so mm-hmm. it, it kind of uh, stays abstract somehow so yeah. I think yeah we only yeah mm-hmm. I think it's I have the feeling that it's it's like this that the case that you just described it's mm-hmm. going to be like this for many artists from the from the visual mm-hmm. art fields because so many people who are actually dealing with NFT come from a different direction mm-hmm. and so there's some inhibitions from the visual art field but um I mean for us for elementum uh, it's it's super nice that you we have people like you you who are curious and who are really willing to go inside this new technology and to really explore what what it offers and maybe now you have been you have made some experiences could you tell us maybe a bit how you see it from from the perspective today like what is interesting what, where did you profit um or or what, maybe also where where you see the problems and, mm-hmm. and what about this technology about the platforms about the development we have seen now that it's become this spring it's become a super huge hype and nft has been in everybody's mouth which makes it easier for some for some people like me who don't have to explain what NFT is to everybody, but also, yeah, maybe there's a, some pitfalls that we don't see yet. What do you think? Well, I always compare it um, a little bit to painting. Um, there, somebody like an author of the painting signs it, and and the work has a character of originality. So mm-hmm. the author is clear, and you can sell the work that way. And the same thing is now happening with uh, digital work, um, Mm -hmm. with digital work of art. It's kind of a digital signature, which gives uh, the work an authenticity character. So it becomes tradable and and no longer falsable. Mm -hmm. Um, And digital art is a very big field. It's getting bigger and bigger. And in my opinion, deserves just as much attention as a classical discipline like like painting or or, or sculpture mm-hmm. um, and this idea is uh, it's nothing new uh, for example in photography um, we could make like many editions but to make it more um, authentic or original or mm-hmm. exclusive we make like for example five editions so mm-hmm. so the idea is nothing new but just the technology of the blockchain is new so um, mm-hmm. um, so in the end it makes uh, digital art uh, tradable mm-hmm. so this I find very interesting like the technology behind it um, and another important factor which is also new you can sell the work to someone that um, um, you can sell the work and this person can resell the work and you always get a, get a, a, sh- a cre- uh, like it's like money sweet, it. yeah, it's, it works like suiza right like the, yeah. the, the with music you have yeah. to, if you have the rights for mm-hmm. a song mm-hmm. and then every time it gets played yeah or not it's not exactly the same yeah. but it's kind of a similar mm-hmm. effect that is created yeah that's true yeah um so uh, it's called the secondary market so this is very new and you can um yeah resell the works and Mm -hmm. still get the share so yeah as i said digital art is a growing field it cannot be ignored and um, uh, nft is a way of giving an artwork a digital signature in the end so Mm -hmm. like like a painting this this coding for digital signature is like you can also call it a technical tool or yeah yeah it's not a media actually right it's not something because I, f- I have the feeling that sometimes NFT also gets treated as it would be a new medium, or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that it, it's actually it's not technology. Yeah, yeah right. Yes, yeah. but it's not the same as uh, I don't know any kind of doing a JPEG or doing mm-hmm. like it's just an addition to a, f- a digital file that you create as an artwork. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is also another the, layer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so and what i also find very interesting about this scene it's very like um people come from all different Mm -hmm. backgrounds it's very as i said before heterogeneous. um i think this is really good for the art world Mm -hmm. so um to um, open up a bit a little bit to open up um so um yeah to mix um and um Mm -hmm. yeah have you um what are the reactions maybe 
within the art world when you when you mm -hmm. tell people or your friends like well i'm now on this nft platform how do you think are people are reacting in the art field or a photography field where you mostly live mm -hmm. i don't know is there skepticism or are people equally curious that as you are or how do you think the the, the whole art world is reacting to it right now well for many people it's very abstract and um I hear at the moment more negative voice about it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, they hear how people sell it for millions, uh, like people did mm -hmm. it for 70 millions almost. So mm -hmm. I think most people that I approach are very skeptical um, and they don't really see the potential in it maybe. Um, And, and they really see it as a hype only. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially older people, like, um, yeah. So For example, you the teachers at Zeta mm -hmm. do they or did, do they even like talk about it or is it a thing in school or? Well, I mean, they are sometimes a bit like, because they were also in the 90s, um, um, how do you call it, network um, Net art. art yeah. Yeah, I also exchanged um, ideas with artists who were part of the network art in the 80s and 90s uh, when the internet came up um, and they, they said there was always also this euphoria now the art market is being re revolutionized, institutions um, bypassed and art is becoming more uh, democratic. Mm -hmm. But in the end they found the logics of the art market never changed and they were Delusion, delusion. Delu uh, like upset and yeah. um, they are always um, a few and the same who are represented in the art market it's the art market is also always reference to itself and 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 few new stories arise so mm -hmm. so I don't know whether the art market itself will really change um, in a mm -hmm. groundbreaking way but I definitely see the potential of the technology for various changing steps. So it mm -hmm. remains exciting. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, it could be a, a, a positive point that it's more democratic, but in the end, it's kind of the same mm -hmm. logic represented from the analog mm -hmm. art market to the digital, yeah. like in the end, like curators pick the best artists mm -hmm. and it's also needed because otherwise yeah. we have a jungle <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we see what's happening on on, on all the, the biggest platforms mm -hmm. open scene rareable and, and yeah. stuff like this which are huge the, the, huge but then again from the art historical or maybe artistic point of view that mm -hmm. that these is, is what i find the, the least interesting ones because yeah you, you mm -hmm. don't even find a way everybody is there and it, it has a democratic aspect but as you say i also mm -hmm. see that this is This is going to be the crux. How do we, how do we navigate between this very diff problem, and how where do we find like a nice way out, or what what's going to be the solution for this? Mm -hmm. It's still a subculture right now. You don't quite see through it yet. Either it it silts up again, or it becomes mainstream, or it maybe stays in in such an in between space. In any case, I find it very interesting if um, this discourse develops from this, that the topic is also dealt with at art schools, for example, or yeah, what kind of exciting new works of art emerge when more and more artists um, deals mm -hmm. with them um, or with the, with the topic or make NFT. Yes. Uh, it is important that you try out things new now that has a lot of potential I think um, even if you work as a community collaborate have common visions uh, cross dis disciplines and exchange uh, ideas mm -hmm. I think that this is a really interesting a aspect that you mentioned it and for me as a curator for for the Elementum platform it's also very important to bring in this aspect to, to have a discourse about it not only to make or to sell the works mm -hmm. But also to really talk about it and, and yeah, what, what is happening actually and how can it be important and how, how does it change um, the views on the art world that we have or how can it be interesting, where can we use it? And therefore, for me, it, I think it's really important that we have all the people from the visual arts field that come into this because if we, if we are too skeptic and don't jump in and just say, oh, whatever, it's going to be a bubble and it pops, 
and not and we're not want we don't want to be part of this uh, i think it's that would be very sad actually so my i see my role also to bring in more of these more of the art field and to also have a different view on this topic and on this technology i think that's very important at the moment yeah for example but i see a positive point is where when you want to for example uh, watch a video of a very established artist um, it's mm -hmm. always very hidden like on maybe hard disk or you have mm -hmm. to go to a gallery or to a museum to mm -hmm. watch the videos mm -hmm. And maybe with NFT, um, you have more access yeah. to videos because um, people are um, less afraid or um, to share it. Yeah, online. to share it on, on. Yeah, it could be a huge, huge asset to yeah make a, make all the archives available. Actually, mm -hmm. that right now are hidden in somewhere, as you say, on drivers lost, never never to be found again. Yeah, could be a real potential for this. Mm -hmm. I agree. Ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, maybe a third. A uh, point uh, that I find uh, interesting is, of course, we know it all, um, the, the original uh, ideological idea mm -hmm. in the 80s, the cryptocurrency was founded as an idea by anarchists um, who wanted to bypass the institution. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that goes, uh, I mean, same, like hand in hand with this democratic thought, I think, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. but just to refer to this very in the beginning idea yeah, where of it the came from. Mm -hmm. anarchist, yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, maybe we can go now um, directly to your work and talk about your artworks that are represented on the platform. Yeah. What's it, when you went to New York, you exhibited in New York at the fair, right? Yes, exactly. Which work did you show there? Uh, it's not here. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but uh, I can explain the ink work. Yes. Um, so I come also from a sound background. Um, so I played in, in clubs and DJed and also produced music for a long time. Mm. So, you still do that? Um, yes, a little bit, but now it's a bad time for <laughs> DJing. <laughs> yes, but, yeah. So um, oh, cool. Very for, nice. in this video, um, I produced first a song. I had the song. Mm -hmm. And I looked for a way to visualize my work. And the focus was on, in, on the interweaving of the inorganic and the organic. So mm -hmm. today I actually see it more as a music video. Um, it was also released on a label. Um, yeah, and for me, the video fits very much to this platform because it's somehow symbolic of the digital influence in our lives. Um, we are constantly connected in one way or not another. Mm -hmm. The analog and the digital are seam seamlessly connected. Mm -hmm. So the digital influences almost every everyday situation. Mm -hmm. It may also no longer be important what is analog and, and what is digital. Um, for example, um, Tinder, we meet each other on, on, on a digital platform, in, in Tinder digitally, we exchange messages uh, and, and then we meet in, in real time. And what happened before in the digital world um, really influences this meeting. So mm -hmm. it's very entangled and I think it's al also not anymore so important to distinguish digital and analog. And um, yeah, so in the end here, you cannot separate anymore the music and um, the, the, the ink. It's kind mm -hmm. of becoming this unity. Yes. Um, so from the basically what happens for people who can now not, not see the, the work, it's, it's mm -hmm. a, a spot of ink that is placed on, on, on a white underground. And then from the beats of the music, from the sound waves mm -hmm. of the music, there's little spots or the, the, there's, the, the movement starts and the ink is kind of dropping or jumping a little bit, or how would you describe it? Yeah, that's a good word, <laughs> jumping. <laughs> or dancing, like the little yeah. ink, ink yeah. dots are dancing to the yeah. beat. And then you have two different views. You have uh, one view, which is from the side, uh, like a um, um, panoramic view, and one side, which is kind of a top-down um, bird's eye view mm -hmm. to the same ink spot, right? right? Like an overview. Of, like, yeah. yeah. From above, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And I also made um, a rare edition. Um, it looks like Mercury mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, so it and was you just flipped the, the colors. 
Or did you actually do it with Mercury? I don't say. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really re very real. Yeah. No, I mean, it's um, at one point you decide for different editions, different mm -hmm. prizes. So um, I, therefore I made a rare edition. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we also see, maybe I can also explain Stripes in the Hood. Mm -hmm. So actually this work was originally a photo work and out of it I made a GIF. Um, it's about the free circulation of images on the internet. Um, they are adapted, transcribed, copied, archived and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's also about the mass distribution of images, mediality and materiality. Um, and so similar to these processes on the internet, I continue to reproduce an image with, with various reproduction processes um, and thus morphed and continued the images like, like a kind. Mm -hmm. um, just to explain, morphing is um, a target image that is as similar as possible, is created from a source image, mm -hmm. so you can always continue with it, mm -hmm. Yeah, morphing. So, um, yeah, I think in general, you can say um, the digital, the digital thinking is very anchored in me. Um, I grew up with the Internet as a matter of course, mm -hmm. but the reference to the analog, the material, the tangible, mm -hmm. um, the haptic is still very important. So mm -hmm. um, and it's also shown in my video work. Mm -hmm. Do you still work in photography? These yeah, days? yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I still make um, a lot of collages. I'm also mm -hmm. working on a collage series at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Will we will we see any of that maybe on Elementum or maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe I, I don't not. know yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just had a, a solo no a duo exhibition with the physician um, mm -hmm. um, in Glarus Gepäck Ausgabe. Mm -hmm. And there I work with a new material, a mm -hmm. plexiglass and mm -hmm. metal. Um, mm -hmm. So it was a strong collaboration between me and um, um, a scientist. So what we basically did is um, we transfer, I mean, she's looking at um, every day at um, non-living objects and um, mm -hmm. particles based of plastic, metal and glass. And the goal is um, that she, through heat, electricity and light influences the particles should um, move like bacteria mm -hmm. so in the end maybe in the very very future like i don't know how mm -hmm. many years um it's um, a way to reproduce cells in the body or in wow. to use in medicine or yeah. Super whatever mm -hmm. um, and what we did we kind of um, these movements this very um anti-figurative movements which we don't really understand um we adopted also copied transferred mm -hmm. it or translated it to um, plexiglass plates mm -hmm. um, and this also happened through an algorithm like mm -hmm. um, in the end it was a laser cutter mm -hmm. so we lasered those movements in fluorescent uh, plexiglass plates mm -hmm. yeah so. nice <laughs> <laughs> so we will go and watch <laughs> yeah <laughs> very cool so yeah, yeah i'm trying also diff like yeah not only video photography but also new materials like mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of a turning point also, this exhibition, a little bit for me. Mm -hmm. So let's see where it goes. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think with this, um, we, we end this little short insight. Thank you very much, Anna, for sharing with us. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we hopefully will see more of you on the Elementum platform or anywhere else. Thank Thanks you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. This was the Elementum podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Visit us at www.elementum.art and start your own art collection today. Thank you for tuning in and see you next time.